tell us what's inside. You're gonna tell us what we want to know. Still don't want to talk, huh? We'll see if this jogs your memory. And jeepers before we get started dissecting that Optima battery make sure you hit the like button if you haven't already subscribed and let's just do a quick explanation as to the difference between a regular battery and these AGM batteries now these are both lead acid batteries that just means they have electrodes that are made of lead basically lead plates and those lead plates are submerged in an acidic electrolyte solution and that that solution is made of a diluted form of sulfuric acid. The difference is your regular wet cell battery, like you find in most vehicles, the plates are all lined up in there like pages in a book, and they have some spaces between them, and they're basically soaking in, uh, in, in that acid. The acid is free flowing in there and in liquid form. The other difference too is your regular lead acid battery require some maintenance from time to time. Occasionally, you have to top off the acid levels by adding distilled water usually, or if you happen to have sulfuric acid solution, you can add some of that too. But generally, you just hit these with some distilled water. So they do require some maintenance. They can also, as they charge and discharge, they can gas off, releasing hydrogen, um, I, think, I believe oxygen as well. So an AGM battery, AGM stands for absorbent glass mat. And what that means, this has lead plates in it, just like this wet cell. The difference is, instead of the acid being free to flow around in this battery, between the plates is a fiberglass mat. And that's where the absorbent glass mat comes from. That fiberglass mat is saturated with the acid solution and so they'll soak those, those fiberglass mats, then they'll squeeze out a very controlled amount of the acid to create, you know, a 5%, 10%, whatever their, whatever their spec is, solution of acid in that glass mat. And there's no free-flowing acid in this battery. The second difference is these don't require any maintenance. You can't top these off. They're a sealed unit. They do have some pressure relief ports here and they're preset at the factory to a certain number of PSI, 4 PSI, 10 PSI, whatever it is, so that if the temperatures internally do rise high enough, these can gas off, but they don't normally do that. Because of that construction, these batteries tend to be way more durable. Uh, they're more shock resistant. They can handle vibration. The other good thing is they can be mounted in uh, pretty much any orientation. You can mount these on their side, on their face, I'm not sure, but I think you can even mount these upside down because none of the acid is free flowing. It stays stuck in, the, in those fiberglass mats. A regular wet cell lead acid battery, you have to mount it vertically. And if the battery is ever tipped over, 
the acid can leak out and the battery can be ruined. So these are preferred in the off-road industry because of their shock resistance, because you can mount them in weird orientations, and if you roll your trail rig, you're not going to ruin your battery. They just make for a stronger design. What makes Optima unique is if you can imagine the lead plates in an AGM battery, so you have a lead plate and a fiberglass mat and a lead plate, and they're all lined up like the pages in a magazine. And that's effective, but not very structurally strong. So what the engineers uh, at Optima decided to do was they thought, hey, a cylinder is a much more strong design than just stacking up the plates like this. And they roll their plates and glass mats up like a roll of toilet paper and create a cylinder. And then that cylinder is extremely strong. One other advantage of these AGM batteries is because they're a completely sealed unit, they have to withstand greater internal pressures, which means they use thicker walls and thicker plastic when they make these batteries. That's just one more advantage to us as off-roaders. All right, that's enough of this technical crap. Let's go cut open that battery. That is interesting. Hmm. We are in. Okay, so you can see how each one of these little packages are rolled up. And again, you can see the there's two layers of fiberglass mat and two layers of lead, and they're tightly packed into this cylinder. And just looking at this, there does appear to be quite a bit of corrosion and even some deformity here and which I don't think this was caused by me breaking this battery open but if you look 
you can see that these connecting sections they seem to be a little bit warped look at the look at the stuff on here see this so it, it appears that what the engineer at Johnson Control told me is probably what happened to this battery is just over time these connections between the individual cells corroded enough to they picked up enough resistance that the battery just then ceased to function but you know after 15 years of abuse uh, I think I think this battery did okay. Let's see if we can get one of these out and unroll it and take a closer look. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that connection there. See, it should be still hard connected in like that and you see how easily that peeled off see the alternating layers of lead fiberglass lead there's quite a bit of corrosion in there let's see if we can get that cell out Still some moisture in, in the in the uh, pads there. Oh yeah, some pretty pretty heavy corrosion here. This should just unroll and lay flat. Look at all this. That should not be red like that. It should be gray. Yeah, see how the lead plates are just coming apart? They finally had it. there see that gray that's what they should look like so they have a lead plate and then a fiberglass layer and then a lead plate under that so that plate there looks a lot better see how it's gray so I think it's safe to say that this is why the battery quit working See that? Should be it should be holding together like this bottom plate here. Hey guys, thanks for coming along while we dissected this battery. I've always wanted to know what was inside one of these and now we know. Hey, if you like this video, we have almost a thousand videos all related to off-road content and a lot of how-tos. Click on one of these links somewhere here at the end of the video for some other great videos, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.